Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about data visualization. A picture is worth a thousand words. It's an old saying, but fits true to any business scenario. It is practically impossible to glance through every single data point that you have, but it's very easy to bring visualization to life. Today, we're going to talk about some of the most interesting visualization techniques. And actually, it is very simple. It's all rule-based. So if you understand the visualization rules, irrespective of which tool you use, you'll be able to come up with impressive visualizations. So here are some of the charts that you'll be able to create on your own by the end of this tutorial. These are called interactive charts. And trust me, they don't require you to install any additional software, whether paid or free. All of this can be done on the go. I'll teach you how to do this using your simple internet browser. We also have examples covering the three-dimensional visualization which is going to leave your audiences very, very impressed if you're able to predict it the right way. All of this, you can take my word, you'll be able to do on your own by the end of this video if you are trying to practice it parallelly. It does not require you to have any formal knowledge of coding. So if you want to get started with something exciting, I think this is a good point. Let's get started. But before we do that, it'll be a good idea to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive our updates. And please feel free to share it with people who might benefit. As far as I understand, data visualization is important to any business, any scenario, whether you are working in a company or you are a researcher. If you want to convey your insights in an impressive way, you need good visualization techniques. So let's get started. All right, so first thing first, you don't need any additional software to get started with this work. All you need to do is go to a browser and just type Google Colab. This takes you to Google Colab as one of the search results. Just click on it. And right now it says, welcome to Collaboratory. You have to click on new notebook. This comes up with your online Jupyter notebook where we will start executing our task. You don't need any additional data source for this as well because we'll be using everything that's already built in. First of all, we wanna give it an appropriate name. Let's say I call it visualization and I want to import some of the libraries. So this is import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, and import seaborn as sns. This is a visualization library. Then we are importing the most important library for today, which is plotly.express as tx. So all these libraries being imported, you're ready to get started with your task. I've just hit shift enter or control enter, or you may simply just run on this, click on display button and just run the cell. This will be executed. Okay, let's get the data set into our environment. I'll tell you an easy trick to get the data sets. First of all, there are many packages in Python which have built-in data sets. So I'm just going to use the data set that's available in Seabond library. And I'm just trying to check what all data sets are available. So for this, you can do sns.get and then you can see the hint is populating that's get data set name. Let me just execute, it'll tell me about the list of data sets which are already available. Now imagine you don't need to go anywhere to get data. A lot of data is built in and available as is for you to get started. I will be taking a particular data set today and I'm just reading it by the name of a data frame. What I'm writing is, SNS dot load underscore data set. And the data set that I'm interested in is MPG or miles per gallon. Let me just do shift enter and then it executes. So the data set is now in our environment. If you want to see how the data set looks like, I'm just doing a check on the first five observations. When I do head, it shows me the first five observations. So the data set is about miles per gallon of different cars. These are the car names and it has car specifications as well. So it has the number of cylinders, this displacement, which has to do with the volume of these cylinders, the horsepower, the weight of the car, the acceleration, and the model year, and the country of origin where the car was produced. Okay, so these are the observations that we have. The rows are the observations, and the columns are the features that we have in our data. Let's quickly inspect a few pieces which may help us analyze this data a little better. I just know how many columns we have, but if you want to know how many rows we have in this data, we may just do a df dot shape and it tells me that there are roughly about 398 rows and nine columns. These are the columns or features that we have. 
we may want to check if we have any kind of missing value in the data. And for this, I'll do df.isnull.sum, and it'll show me column-wise missing values, if any. So yes, there is one column, which is horsepower, where we have six missing values. Now, since we are focusing on visualization today, I would, I would prefer to eliminate these missing values by removing the rows which contain these missing values. So what I'm doing is I'm going to override this data by saying df.drop an A, and this will take care of any missing value that we had in the data. But it will remove those six rows, which is not a concern for us now because we are more interested in the visualization. So now we have our data, which is a complete data set, which does not have any missing values. First thing that we have to start with is known as the univariate analysis. Univariate means one variable at a time kind of analysis. And how do we start with univariate analysis? Again, there are certain rules. So if you have one variable, which let's say is a continuous variable, what is a continuous variable? A continuous variable can pretty much attain any value in a given range, right? It can vary. So now, Let's say we take the most important variable, this entire study, the data was collected keeping the mileage in mind. So let's take this as a variable that we want to visualize. And for this purpose, what I'm doing is I'm calling px, which is, remember, we imported plotly.express as px, right? So we're going to use this particular library for interactive visualization. So I've called px and I'm doing px.histogram. It's very easy because it keeps prompting you at all stages to complete and as you see, you know, you get almost all the details that you need to be able to proceed with this. But the basic inputs that we want to give are just the name of the data frame, the data source, and what is it that you want to visualize. So as I said, I want to visualize the miles per gallon variable. Let's just see if we execute this, what happens. So this is our histogram, right? What does it represent? It represents the entire range over which your variable MPG is split. It has created certain bins, certain buckets. So let's say there is a data from zero to 100. Let's say we divide it into 10 buckets. So zero to 10 and 11 to 20 and so on and so forth. You can divide the data into buckets like this. And this is now telling you which is the most common value, right? So roughly your bucket of 18 to 19.9 .9 miles per gallon has maximum number of cars, which is 44. So the height, or the y-axis here represents the count, and the x-axis represents the bins. So this is your histogram, which is an interactive histogram. Another way to visualize the same kind of data is through something that's known as a box plot. So that's called px.box. And again, you have to pass the name of the data frame. You have to mention what is it that you want. So we would want to see the spread of the box on the y-axis, and that's why I'm passing y is equal to mpg, right? If I do X, it will be horizontal. Right now, if you see, once it is executed, this is our box plot. This is a very popular plotting choice. Why? Because it talks about the central tendency, which is the median of the data, talks about the minimum and the maximum values, and also gives you the middle 50% of the data, which is known as the interquartile range. So this is nothing but the 25th percentile, and this is the 75th percentile. We've explained these concepts in great detail in our central tendency related videos. So anybody who's new to this may want to refer to those videos. This is a good way to look at the data, especially both in terms of central tendency and spread. Let's take another variable. So, so far we looked at a variable which is continuous in nature, a numerical variable. Let's take a variable which is categorical in nature. What is the rule to visualize that? The good thing is, in this particular library, histogram can be used to visualize that as well. What we'll be using is essentially known as a bar plot or a count plot in certain libraries. It is going to be very helpful in visualizing even the categorical data to us. So let's just see. So what I'm doing is I've passed the name of the data frame, and then I am just going to call the name of the variable, which is in this case a categorical variable. So it is about the countries whether the car was produced in US or Japan or in Europe. And let's just say we leave it to this right now and let me execute this. So you can see, instead of taking the numerical variable on the x-axis, this time it has taken the categorical variable on the x-axis and, and it's showing me the number of times each country has appeared in our data. So you can see US, we have 245 entries. 
Japan, we have 79 entries. In Europe, we have 68 entries. If you want to make it a little better, you may even want to give a color which will be unique to the origin. So if we execute it again, you will see the colored bars, right? So this is the univariate analysis. Another choice for univariate analysis that we have here is actually the pie chart, which is a very popular chart. So let's just see, we call a pie chart and this is px.py, data frame reference. And then you just need to type the color. Let's say we want to give a color which is unique to every origin. And the next one that we are typing is the names. And let's just keep it the same as origin. Let me execute this. So you can see that we have a pie chart available now, right? And this has just converted those values that we were looking at into percentage. That's the difference. So if you see, it is not a magic that we are doing. What I'm trying to say is that this is all rule-based. So what are the rules that we should take away from this so far? So when we are doing univariate analysis, if we're dealing with a continuous variable, the plotting choices are histograms and box plots. And if we are dealing with a categorical variable, the plotting choices are bar plots and pie chart. This is very important. You should remember this. Irrespective of which tool you're using, this is going to be very helpful. Plotting is rule-based. Plotting is not random. 